Hello, I'm EVM, welcome back to the channel and to solar panels. Do they make financial sense in 2023? This is a very difficult broad statement to make because everybody is different. You've got where your house is, what aspect your house is, what shape, size and shape, what panels have you got, how many panels have you got, what tariff are you on, how much do you consume, how much do you export? There's so many variables, you're gonna have to do some work yourself. I'm sorry, you're gonna have to do at least an hour or two's research when you're spending thousands of pounds. So it is worthwhile doing, but this will hopefully help you out with that research. I will also put in the description below a link to an Excel spreadsheet, which will do all this for you if you want to change some of the figures I'm gonna give you here. The figures I'm using are based on my house's generation, which I would say is fairly typical. I have an east-west array, four panels on the east side, 10 panels on the west side, and it's not optimal by any means, but I can't get any more up there and I'm generating 3,000 kilowatt hours roughly in a year or three megawatt hours. So that's the example I'm going to give you. You can do your own, obviously, using that spreadsheet, but ultimately this should give you at least a fair idea of how much you would save. But of course, everyone is different. as I said, there are too many variations, but we can get close enough. The biggest one is the import tariff or the electricity tariff that you're on right now. The first example, one of two that I'm going to use is if you're on the price cap, which is 34 pence per kilowatt hour. There are other tariffs coming out now. We're getting fixed rates and better rates. Electricity is coming down, but a lot of people will still be paying 34 pence. If you're on that and at least using the uh, company I'm with, Octopus, you can get 15 pence export price. So you buy for 34p per kilowatt hour, you export or sell for 15 pence per kilowatt hour. So you can clearly see why it's beneficial to use as much as possible rather than export it because you will save 34 pence for every kilowatt hour of electricity you use from your panels rather from your, the grid but you would only get 15 pence by just exporting it to the grid. So based on that, this is what that table will give you. What you need to figure out is how much you will generate in a given year. Hopefully your solar installer will give you that idea, or you could just use my usage pattern as a fairly average example. So if we are generating three megawatt hours or 3000 kilowatt hours, and you think you'll be able to use 40% of that, then that means you will use 1200 kilowatt hours and you'll export of course 1800 kilowatt hours so you'll save 408 pounds by not having to pay 34 pence for it and you will get paid 270 pounds by exporting it to the grid and getting paid for that so that will give you a total saving of 678 pounds you can see as we go further down here so if you've got more solar divert options a home battery is best uh, immersion heater for example, an electric car that you can put the excess solar into when it's packed up, things like that. If you're down here then you're saving £906 at 80% consumption rather than 678 at 40% which is why solar divert options slowly become very interesting if you get solar panels because you want to use as much as possible. A home battery as I said is best because it can store all that solar energy and then you can use it through the night, for example, until the sun comes out the next day and you start the process again. So as I said, even if you base it on our generation, where do you think you'll be? And if you're gonna have these sort of things for 30 years or more, who, who knows, um, then, well, you're gonna have solar divert options. You're gonna change how you use things in the house. If the sun's blazing and you've got way more solar than you're using, well, I'll turn the washing machine on now rather than when we normally do it, if it's ready anyway. You get my point. So again, if we pick, well, uh, let's middle ground, 60% consumption, 792 pounds. If you think that's what I'm gonna be better off by, it's nearly 800 quid a year, how much does it cost to install? Well, I've had a quick look around at a few websites that give you fully installed prices. I'm looking at one right now, uh, five kilowatt panels, with 25 year warranty and 30 year performance warranty, and that's 6,800 pounds installed, fully installed MCS accredited, which of course I am assuming here because you will need to be MCS accredited, your install will, to get the, uh, the export tariff, sorry. So how much is that? 6,800 pounds. If you are 
going to be buying that at £6,800. Some will be cheaper, some will be more expensive. Again, every house is different. Then, based on 60%, £792 savings, you're looking at about, what, eight and a half years. But that's eight and a half years based on the price of electricity today. Inflation tells us that although things do that, especially with the weird crisis we've had uh, over the last year or so, things tend to get more expensive as time goes on. If you go back 10 years, electricity was a lot cheaper than it is today. And I'm pretty sure if you fast forward 10 years, it's probably gonna be more expensive than it is today because that's the nature of, of inflation. Even if we assume that the price is roughly what it is now for the next umpteen years, you're looking at about eight and a half years before you get that back. However, if you think, well, if I can make better use of that, if I can get a solar divert option, which will increase this, but also increase this, then the figures change. So again, it depends on where you are. If you think you're barely gonna use anything at all, then 621 pounds would take, well, what, 11 years? Now what I'm going to do is change all these figures for if you're on a time of day tariff, which is the one I'm on. This is only really relevant for people who own an electric vehicle. So the tariff in question is called Octopus Intelligent Tariff. So you pay a lot more, or well, you pay more during the day but you get it at like less than a third of the price for just six hours. So if you've got an electric car as I do, you can put all your fuel in at a very, very cheaper rate. And even though your house might be paying more, you're saving so much more with your electric car, certainly given the miles I do anyway, it makes sense. You're paying more for your house, but way less for your car. So that's the tariff I'm on. So if you're not on a time of day tariff or you don't think you ever will be, you might as well skip this part of the video. Right then, here we are. This is for Octopus Intelligent, which as I said before, is 10 pence for six hours and 41.7 pence during the day. So that's going to have an effect on the usage and especially the export because this only comes with a 4.1 pence per kilowatt hour export tariff. Now the reason for that is because if I had six hours at 10 pence and I could export at 15 pence, then I would just charge my battery up if, you know, you would get a battery and, and make money every day. Electricity companies out here, as charities, they're here to make money and that's never gonna happen. So you get a much lower export rate, but the day rate, which is when the solar is gonna be generated, let's face it, is higher. As I said earlier, this isn't just inflating that to make this look better. This is the cheapest tariff for me and a lot of people out there with an electric vehicle and if you have a battery especially. So again, this is only relevant to a certain amount of people. Because the import is so much more expensive, if we look at this one here, where you're only using 30% or 900 kilowatt hours, you're only saving a total of 461 pounds. That is lower than the previous board where you're on the price cap. But as soon as you get further down, the savings are greater because export is almost pointless. Even if you're exporting 70% of what you generate, you're only earning 86 pounds, it's nothing. So clearly with a time of day tariff, using what you generate is everything. And if you can get certainly down here, then you're saving well over a thousand pounds. There are other tariffs as well. There's the cozy tariff, there's one for batteries now, I forgot what that's called, flux. I can't do a board for each one. This is why you'll have to do some of the work yourself. But as a generic sort of broad statement, these are the figures and the ones on the previous board. These are the figures you're probably looking at. I suspect most people will be around here. I consider all this kind of green energy stuff. It's like having a jigsaw. The more pieces of the puzzle you have, the more sense it makes. You get solar panels and then you think, well, I want to use more. So you get a solar divert option, maybe an immersion here or a home battery system. So you spend more and you save more. And then you think, well, I'm still generating more than I'm using. What else can I do? Well, I could stop using gas and get a heat pump because that's running off electricity. I could generate free electricity. An EV, the tariff, all these things come together. And if you have them all, which requires a significant investment, then you get very cheap running costs, but at a great install cost. So, you know, again, well, everybody's different. Not everybody can afford solar panels, let alone all the other stuff I've just mentioned. So this is obviously not going to suit everybody. I personally believe solar panels are a no brainer. If you're gonna be in your house for, for, you know, for years, if this is your forever house, if you will, whatever you wanna call it, then they do make financial sense. That, that's the way I look at it. If you're in a lucky enough position to have a disposable income, whatever you wanna call it, do you wanna spend it on takeaways, smoking, drinking, holidays, 
uh, uh, a nicer car. Hell, the car I had a few weeks ago, it was, f what, I think it was £1,200 just for the paint option. I'd rather put that towards something like this. So there's ways and means, but you still need to be in a, uh, what do I call it, privileged position to be able to get this sort of stuff in the first place. It's the way of the world, I'm afraid. Don't blame the messenger. I'm just saying what solar panels can give you and why ultimately you have to do the research, the work yourself. As I said before, the very simple uh, basic spreadsheet is in the description below if you want to download that and have a play around with it, that's fine. All the instructions are in the spreadsheet. You just need uh, Microsoft Excel essentially to open it up. Um, so there you go, we're done. Um, let me know if you've got solar panels. Have they been beneficial to you? Is this something you're looking at? On a side note, which won't make anybody feel better, that has gone up quite a lot in the last 18 months alone, two years. I reckon that's probably about £2,000, maybe £2,500 more than I paid in two, two and a bit years, however long I've had them. So that just shows how much everything's gone up in the recent 18 months or so. Anybody that's still on the original 40 odd P fit payments, which no longer exist, well, they're laughing. So anyway, there we go. What do you think? Let me know. If you want to uh, help the channel out, click subscribe. If you really want to help it out, then click the join button, 99p a month. You get videos like this on Sunday instead of Friday, a live stream at the end of every month for members only, unless I'm on holiday. And ultimately, it's uh, a little benefit that helps out the channel. So thanks for doing that if you do, and uh, thanks for watching.